Hello and welcome to Rajya Sabha Television. You're watching the Big Picture with me, Frank Razan Pereira. The first ever container cargo from Kolkata via Bangladesh's Chhattogram port has reached Agartala. The External Affairs Ministry said on Thursday, terming it a historic milestone in the Indo-Bangladesh connectivity and economic partnership. Union Minister Mansukh Mandavia had last week flagged off the first trial container ship from Kolkata carrying cargo meant for Agartala that reached the city via the Chhattogram port. India and Bangladesh have enhanced cooperation in shipping and inland water trade in the recent past. Under the protocol on inland water transit and trade, in addition to the six existing ports of call, five more in each country have been added recently. A port of call is a place where a ship stops during a voyage to enable the loading and unloading of cargo. In this edition of The Big Picture, we will analyze the Indo-Bangladesh connectivity and economic partnership. Joining me on the program today are... Veena Sikri, former ambassador, Harshvi Pant, head strategic studies observer research foundation and Alok Bansal, director India Foundation. Thank you to all my guests for joining me on this edition of The Big Picture. Ambassador, I'd like to begin the program with you. What are your thoughts on this significant milestone in the Indo-Bangladesh connectivity and economic partnership? Well, I think it is indeed a very major uh, milestone that has been achieved. Uh, but let's look back. Actually, all of this was reversed in the year 1965 during the Indo-Pak War. And we are now, after more than 50 years, after more than five decades, thanks to the cooperation of the Bangladesh government, uh, strongly led by Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina, we have now reached that level where we now again are doing our transshipment uh, through Bangladesh. And I think this is a very important milestone because it uh, shows the implementation, the will to do it, uh, the goodwill, the decisions, and a lot of agreements have been signed. But now we've actually seen the implementation. And that is why I think this shows that it can be done. Earlier, we had one oversized transportation for the Palatana power plant, which went through. Uh, but I think this is very uh, uh, significant to note that the focus on implementation, on deciding and then doing things. And I think that uh, this is a culmination of a lot of uh, positive factors between in India-Bangladesh relations that have been happening in the last few years. Let's just look at, say, 2019, last year. Uh, it was a remarkable year in terms of uh, implementation of agreed decisions. Uh, we had, for example, in March uh, 2019, uh, Prime Minister Modi and Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina, by video conferencing, they actually um, inaugurated several projects which had been in the pipeline where India is doing these small development projects for the people of Bangladesh. You know, these included 11 water treatment plants, it included 36 community clinics, and, you know, it included um, cooperation between institutions of India and Bangladesh in professional skill development um, and, you know, training of people, human resource development. We also had the visit by Prime Minister of Sheikh Hasina, Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina of Bangladesh. She came here in October last year. The President of Bangladesh was here for the inauguration of Prime Minister Modi's second term um, earlier in May last year, and uh, we've had a number of visits. The External Affairs Minister, Dr. Jay Shankar, was in Dhaka in August of last year, and we had our information, uh, um, we had our Environment Minister who was there, who visited Dr. Prakash Javdekar also was there. So this has been really such an active and dynamic relationship, and this has gone beyond the normal of just education and health and tourism. We're now cooperating in nuclear science, we're cooperating in space and information technology. We are setting up 500 in 500 schools of Bangladesh, we're setting up computer labs and language labs. So I think that uh, this focus on actually reaching out to the people and showing the results on the ground where everybody can feel it is tremendous. Now, this um, transshipment that has been achieved, it's really a very strong win-win situation because it's a collaboration between logistics companies of India and Bangladesh. Uh, the ships may belong to Bangladesh. The transportation will be through Bangladesh. It went to Ch Chittagong port. Uh, the ship went to Chittagong port carrying uh, containers of lentils and steel rods. And then it was transported onto a truck, which went to Akhora. And from there, it went uh, through the Akora Agatala uh, rail link and uh, road link. It went to Tripura. But there are other such communication channels and transshipment channels that are being developed through Mongla port, for example. And uh, Mongla port from Kolkata port is just a day's uh, transshipment. And then uh, through Mongla port, it can go right up the riverway to Zakiganj in Assam, across the Assam border. So there uh, is a very traditional millennia old water transportation network that has existed in this part of the world, which fell into disuse 
after 1965. And now oh. this beginning of the restoration signifies a great cooperation between the corporate sector, the people to people sector, the trade sector, and the bilateral relationship between India and Bangladesh, notching up another strong victory. Absolutely. All right. So, Captain Bansal, let me bring you in here now. So, access to ports in Bangladesh is critical really to opening shorter and uh, alternate routes to connect the northeast region. So, it's a win-win situation like the ambassador put it, isn't it? Because it's, you know, it's, 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 it's significant from our perspective as well because it cuts short the travel distance from Kolkata to Agartala from 1,600 kilometers by one-fourth to around 450 kilometers. Undoubtedly. I think it's a very, very big achievement and we need to look at it into a historical uh, concept. In fact, uh, till 65, we could uh, easily go through Bangladeshi territory to northeast. It's only after 65 uh, war that all these roads were blocked. All these pathways which passed through Bangladesh were blocked. There were seven railway lines which were going into Bangladesh at that point of time, functioning railway lines. Uh, but it has taken us such a long period to get back to normal. Today, fortunately, we have not revived six out of seven uh, railway lines. We have added two more. And uh, I think uh, these ports, access to all these ports will make uh, northeastern states of India uh, get supplies from India at a far lesser cost and far lesser time than was hitherto possible. And I think uh, this is where uh, it's very, very significant. Uh, uh, Mongola port, uh, Ambassador Veena Sikri talked about, which is a riverine port, uh, is of course closer to Kolkata, but uh, uh, while transshipping cargo, Chittagong is of course a bigger port and I think we are, I am looking for a day when it can be carried from Chittagong port by train all the way to Agartala because the railway links are being established that would establish. Uh, improve uh, the connectivity. And if we see last uh, six, seven years, as far as India-Bangladesh relations are concerned, we have taken India-Bangladesh relations to a new high, possibly to the level which existed between 71 to 75. Not only uh, uh, inland waterways are being worked out, we are working on railways. Of course, the day Calcutta, Dhaka, Agartala bus service was inaugurated, Transit was virtually granted because you could travel from Calcutta to Agartala via Dhaka, which was virtually transit without saying so. We are actually now exporting electricity to Dhaka from our northeastern grid, from Agartala and places, and Bangladesh is providing us the bandwidth. I think uh, uh, there are uh, many private sector players uh, in India who are also getting involved with Bangladesh. Of course, Adani is claiming to produce its electricity from Jharkhand and supplying it to Bangladesh. Uh, but one of the big uh, important uh, landmarks would be this big power project which is coming up in Bangladesh uh, being built by Reliance Power. In fact, uh, another factor which has come up is that the dedicated export zones for India, which Bangladesh has given up. So I think uh, India-Bangladesh relations are moving to a very, very new high. And we need to look at it uh, more carefully because in the recent past, we had uh, uh, that aberration where there was, of course, a telephone uh, communication between uh, uh, Prime Minister of uh, Pakistan and Prime Minister of Bangladesh, uh, which many in Pakistan tried to blow it up saying that uh, uh, restoration of uh, good diplomatic relations between Pakistan and Bangladesh. But we need to understand uh, that as far as India and Bangladesh relations are concerned, we are too close. We have virtually uh, eliminated all the pending irritants that were there in our relations. I think land boundary agreement was, of course, one big thing. But acceptance of uh, permanent uh, tribunals award on maritime uh, boundary delineation was another. There have been uh, numerous issues, I think. Now, probably the Tista waters is the only uh, mm. pending issue, uh, and uh, which is, I think, just a matter of time. Because whatever has been agreed, that level of water is being allowed to go to Bangladesh and that has been going. The only thing is the agreement has not been inked because of internal political dynamics which exist in India. But uh, uh, we need to understand that all these good relations between India and Bangladesh are mm -hmm. incumbent upon the current regime in Bangladesh sustaining and yeah. Sheikh Hasina's uh, 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 staying in power. And that is, I think... Uh, a big vulnerability from my point of view, I think, as far as India-Bangladesh relations are concerned.
Okay, all right. Coming back to the, uh, uh, you know, to the connectivity and economic partnership, Professor uh, Harshvi Pant, this is not just beneficial for us, it is also helpful for Bangladesh's economy as well, isn't it? Uh, yes, I think it's largely an issue where, uh, you know, when we are looking at the next stage of economic recovery for India, when we are looking at the next stage of economic recovery for Bangladesh, uh, it makes uh, perfect sense to have the kind of connectivity. And, and I think that as Ambassador was mentioning, the fact that it is now implemented on the ground, we see the results of this. Uh, that is, I think, very, very important because for a long time, the argument has been that implementation has not been done, that we had these ideas, but they are not being operationalized. And I think now that we see those oper that operationalization of some of these, uh, you know, meta projects and connectivity is one one area where India is uh, has been seen as particularly vulnerable, uh, given that our you know our uh, relationship with our neighbors, uh, India has not been able to generate that level of connectivity with our neighbors, which is uh, something that India needed to work on. And now that we are seeing the results, I think that will generate confidence in other neighbors as well uh, that that we can we can deliver it and we can uh, produce results on the ground. So I think when you when you're looking at a post pandemic recovery, when you're looking at the economic uh, problems that India and Bangladesh both are facing, uh, you know, these kind of projects allow us to envision uh, a future where both can partake in a, in a in an economic recovery faster and which is more sustainable because that is grounded in the realities of the region. So Northeast and Bangladesh getting connected, getting interconnected uh, through various natural means uh, is, uh, you know, geographical connectivity, the land, uh, water, inland waterways, etc. That means that that is that is something organic about uh, about the, the regional's, region's economic growth uh, that is going to be in the future. So I think that is that is where the potential for uh, the regional regeneration lies. Where it, the Northeastern regeneration, Bangladesh's engagement, Bangladesh's engagement with that region Region, and India's larger economic uh, paradigm where Northeast becomes mainstream in India's economic imagination. And I think these are very, very important initiatives in those contexts. And as I think uh, uh, both uh, Mr. Bansal and Ambassador point, have pointed out, this is a larger part of this India-Bangladesh engagement today where we are looking at each other's economic prosperity as, a, as beneficial for, for each other. You know, it's, it's not simply that we are we are rising, so what, what it has to do with the other side. And I think the fact that this could happen uh, at a time when the world is still, you know, trying to face the, the realities of COVID-19 and what, what will happen post-COVID-19, I think these are very important. Uh, these are important markers in that sense for both uh, India and Bangladesh. And my sense is that this, this generates enormous confidence uh, in Bangladesh, in India, in India's Northeast, that things that were only thought about in the past could now be done could now be operationalized and we could take our economic recovery to a level where perhaps as we as we you know come to terms with our uh, with with the trials and tribulations of a post covid uh, era uh, you know there is something organic about the regional uh, regions regions growth that could happen and both i think uh, could ha could could not have happened without the kind of leaderships that we have had in the two countries uh, and the kind of economic and other engagements which i think have already been pointed out that have happened over the last few years the kind of confidence that it has generated that the two countries could work together on critical issues that have been in dispute for long, but now they are being settled one by one. The fact that the two leaderships are more in sync with each other than they have ever been in the past, and the fact that the bureaucratic arrangements in both countries uh, are looking towards practical action-oriented problem-solving uh, issues, uh, you know, rather than just talking in generics. So I think that is that is a substantive achievement, and I think this particular uh, you know, land connectivity, uh, sorry, inland connectivity project uh, that you mentioned is something that will, I think, generate greater confidence to do other things in other areas as well. Absolutely. Okay. All right. So, uh, widening the scope of the discussion a little bit, Ambassador, what impetus does this give sub regional cooperation, for instance, the BBI and grouping uh, and, and others? No, I think this is a, a great signal uh, to and a great boost. Uh, to uh, BBIN cooperation, Bangladesh, Bhutan, India, and Nepal, and also BIMSTEC cooperation. And the BIMSTEC cooperation, as you know, the Secretariat is located in Dhaka, and we are hoping that there will be a summit meeting again, you know, um, maybe next year. Uh, so this gives a tremendous boost because the reality of this move that has happened, this transshipment, is that Nepal and Bhutan can participate in it fully. So if these, uh, uh, the transshipment, from Calcutta to Chittagong and then up there can actually directly benefit Nepal and Bhutan. Actually, the other route via Mongla that I spoke about earlier, the river and transport, that is even of more direct benefit because it goes closer uh, to Nepal and Bhutan. And also it, um, uh, it, it you know, can go directly without transshipment to trucks. 
So the environmental, the positive environmental impact of this, uh, what has happened for India, for the entire region is tremendous. Because if you were going to use the 1600 kilometers as you spoke about, then imagine the amount of trucks, the amount of pollution, the amount of, uh, uh, you know, difficulty that would be there, the use of the roads. But now by using uh, the river route, which is almost, uh, you know, uh, environmental impact is very low. And then using the trucks for a little bit, is very good. Now, if we do this for Bhutan and Nepal, we are already doing it with Bhutan and Nepal in the case of power. Nepal, we are, you know, using uh, Nepal also and Bhutan also, they want to be part of the power grid between India, uh, Nepal, uh, Bangladesh and Bhutan. This is very positive. So even transshipment can benefit them. And then the transport of their goods. They can use these routes instead of, again, using all the trucks and the roads uh, through India. So I think that this will give a very big boost uh, to the BBI and, and BIMSTEC. There is always the motor vehicles agreement that we have been talking about for a long time. And maybe Bhutan is now willing to have another meeting. So maybe when the meetings go on, the, the BBI and motor vehicles agreement uh, will also come into force. I think the, the um, actually sector of power that um, uh, Professor Alok, Dr. Alok Bansal had mentioned, this is very significant because this, again, is another direct people-to-people -people aspect which will benefit Nepal and Bhutan and India and India's Northeast. When we talk of benefiting India's Northeast, we have to look at the fact that even for Bangladesh uh, traders, Bangladesh manufacturers, not only is India getting access to the Northeast, but Bangladesh corporate sector is also getting access to the Northeast. So they are also getting access to a new market, a very big new market. Some of it they are already using in terms of access, in terms of food processed uh, products and all that. But I think this regularization of the transshipment methodology will mean that they too, the corporate sector in Bangladesh, will get a huge new market opened up in the Northeast. And if you look beyond that, maybe even in Myanmar. Uh, so I think that this regional impact of this uh, streamlining the transshipment is very valuable. And I think that these kind of measures uh, are in many ways irreversible. You know, um, uh, Dr. Luke Bansal spoke about, uh, you know, the question of uh, Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina and so on. But the point is, if you show the advantage of these kind of measures to the common man, that this is what development and prosperity is all about, mm. then that makes it real. Uh, we do know that, for example, um, I think Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina came back to power in 2009 for her second term, uh, the power shortage was a huge crisis in the economy. And they had a tremendous difficulty, but because Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina was determined to focus on economic development uh, for right. Bangladesh and economic growth of Bangladesh, and she wanted to show the results, so she focused on the power sector. Without that, the economy could not have progressed. So they tried all kinds of, they even tried, you know, these riverine uh, power plants, uh, you know, which were very, very expensive and very polluting. But now this power trade, the power exchange between India and Bangladesh through Khulna, for example, in southwest Bangladesh, has really opened up that economy. Sure. Students can read at night, study their books at night. Industries can work, factories can work, you know, all kinds of uh, agricultural um, energy using products can be used. It has been a tremendous boost. So the it has shown to the people of Bangladesh what the positive factor in this cooperation between India and Bangladesh is. And right. uh, now with adding Nepal and Bhutan, it's added the sub-regional uh, cooperation aspect. Absolutely. All right. So, uh, 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 Captain Bansal, let me go back to a point that you are making uh, in your opening remarks. You know, while we've seen some major issues with our other neighbors, but that's not the case with Bangladesh. This is something that you spoke about as well. You know, that doesn't mean that we do not have any irritants. There are irritants, but we seem to be sorting them out very easily. Uh, undoubtedly, I think India-Bangladesh uh, relations are actually a result of resolving these irritants, some of which could have been extremely vexed, like maritime boundary dispute. I think the decision that we will go for arbitration and accepting the permanent court of arbitration's award without any appeal or any comment was, I think, a brilliant move because uh, any bilateral arrangement would have reached to the same uh, result, would have been criticized by one political actor or the other, saying that there has been certain appeasement by either in India or in Bangladesh. But once a third party gives a decision, that's been accepted in total. What is even more important, and I think what is very, very important for stability of India-Bangladesh relations, as Ambassador Veena Sikri said, that a common man in Bangladesh must start deriving 
deriving benefit out of this relationship. And that's what is being done. This transmission of power, bandwidth being supplied. And now when the transit starts in full flow, when trains, when ships start moving and Bangladesh starts earning huge revenues by these goods that are transported, I think their stakes will rise. The another step will be when we take it to a sub-regional or a regional level. Then it will be even more stable because uh, you talked of BBIN. I think establishing a common grid between Bhutan, Eastern India and Bangladesh, of course, is a uh, given. Nepal also wants to join in. That can be taken it up. And once this sort of an arrangement uh, stabilizes because uh, Bangladesh is keen on importing power from Nepal and Bhutan through Indian territory and is willing to allow Indian uh, power to go from northeastern India to the rest of India. Uh, so I think interlinkages can be established. But of course, when we take it further east as part of BIMSTEC, that will be a real game changer. To my mind, uh, when Myanmar uh, uh, gets integrated with this connectivity, uh, then we will see a phenomenal change because then a huge market of Southeast Asia also gets opened up and then we can go in for big economies of scale. Uh, but I think it is pragmatic leadership in India and Bangladesh that has actually led to various resolutions of long pending irritants like land boundary agreement. It was actually historical agreement which had been pending for close to seven decades and it was resolved in one go without going into the nitty gritties. So those are the things and that is where I think we need pragmatic leadership which has actually shown us the way and which has brought the two countries together. Yeah, all right. So, uh, Professor Harshvi Pant, you know, as far as uh, this issue of political irritants uh, is concerned that Captain Bansal just raised, should we just dismiss it as, you know, a small irritant or how big an issue it is really as far as the bilateral relationship between the two countries are concerned? Well, so long as, uh, you know, the, the leaderships in the, in the two countries were at loggerheads, uh, it was very difficult to move forward in some, on, some, on most of these issues. And I think what we have seen is what, uh, what responsible leadership can do and how big a change it can, it can uh, make in a relationship. Because we knew about these problems, these problems were long pending, uh, but somehow because of political dynamic, either in India or in Bangladesh, for one reason or the other, the, the, it, it, was, it was unable to move forward in a direction that perhaps was needed. Because as, you, as we can see, once we have moved beyond those disputes, the results have been coming in swift and fast uh, and we have been scaling up those those results in, in a very big way. So clearly they were important to be resolved. Uh, and even, you know, even today you hear, for example, at times when you have these conferences or engagements about Tisa River dispute, uh, uh, you know, it, key, it keep on uh, appearing in the, on the agenda. Although if you look at it in terms of the larger matrix, uh, that is seemingly, uh, you know, a, you know a, a problem, but it has not derailed the relationship. In fact, the relationship has moved forward, as we have been discussing, uh, by leaps and bounds in the last five to six years. So what we are looking at is, is an arrangement whereby uh, the two nations can, uh, you know, uh, uh, appropriate each other's uh, developmental prospects, uh, become a part of that, and also make sure that those irritants remain, uh, you know, a minor aspect of the relationship, do not consume the relationship, as seems to have happened in some of the other relationships. And I think this is what good leadership does, and this is what good leadership has done in the case of India and Bangladesh, that we have been able to keep the irritants as a minor footnote. We have been able to keep them where they, you know, where they actually belong, and we have been able to move the relationship forward in a very, very positive direction, whether it is, you know, uh, uh, problem solving, whether it is developing, uh, you know, uh, economic ties which have been growing, which have been, or whether it has been trying to sort of look to the future. The future of economic globalization, regional engagement is in connectivity. So unless we get our connectivity projects right, we will not be able to partake in the next stage of, of uh, globalization, in the next phase of uh, economic recovery. And I think that's precisely where uh, it, is ve it is very timely that such initiatives have come and very timely that such initiatives are being looked at uh, in a major way. And I, and I think the larger, therefore, the larger matrix of the relationship looks very positive. Uh, the, the political relationship looks very positive, despite some of the mi minor issues. But I think the, the, uh, the, the concerted effort on both sides should be uh, to keep it the way it is. Rather, and not to let you know some uh, either vested interests or to let other irritants become the uh, you know the, the focal point of this engagement, and therefore to develop and, and I think as has been discussed uh, to develop projects that benefit ordinary individuals, ordinary uh, both in Bangladesh as well as in India's northeast. When we are talking of northeast, then if 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 you have people in the northeast 
start looking at Bangladesh uh, as a country where from where they are deriving benefits which with the engagement with which is producing results on the ground and similarly Bangladesh looks at India's Northeast as a major uh, player in their scheme of things, I think we will be on the safer ground and we have been uh, and therefore what we have seen over the last few years is a very, very positive engagement in those aspects. The, right. the question would be that that strategic picture, that strategic mapping should not be lost sight of well, while we are even while we are dealing with minor irritants. Absolutely. Okay, can, I add to that, can I add a point here? Yeah, uh, please. I, I, yeah, I'd like to add a point here. I think that uh, uh, what Professor Pal said is quite right, and uh, we have to keep the big picture in mind. But we have to also recognize that there are pressures at work within Bangladesh. There are both the Pakistanis and the Chinese. They are exerting their full pressure within Bangladesh to change the situation. I and they are working through their own vested interests. Some of these vested interests may even be within the Army League party. So we have to recognize that. But as I said, again, as Professor Pant has reinforced and, and, and so has Captain Bansal, uh, the fact is that what is the popular feeling in Bangladesh about this? This is vital. This has to be stronger and stronger and has to be in the right direction to know that what we are doing is to be the benefit of the people of uh, Bangladesh and neither Pakistan nor China can ever replicate this or do what India can do for the people of Bangladesh. Right. So this is a very important, it's a very strategic aspect and we have to uh, understand the forces at play. There are forces at play. There are people who are wanting to take it in a different direction. But I'm right. sure that Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina, with her strong legacy of uh, keeping the interests of the people in, of Bangladesh in mind, of nationalism, of the legacy of the liberation war, uh, she is quite determined to take it in this direction uh, and maintain the good relations with India. Okay, all right. I've got about a minute left on the program. So 30 seconds each, Captain Balsal and uh, Professor Rajvi Pan. Captain Balsal, starting first with you. How do we scale up our already robust ties? I think uh, we need to uh, expedite some of these projects uh, which are going. Uh, of course, one is Akhora Agartala link, rail link, which is important because I have always believed that when goods start getting transmitted by railways, it's always preferable over roadways because roadways, uh, accidents, uh, road conditions, a lot of issues come into play. Uh, railways is always better. Of course, ships are, of course, taking it, but from ship, you have to unload it to road. It will be better if they start traveling by rail and that will be one... Uh, Second is, of course, this power project, which will be the largest power project probably in Bangladesh and, of course, the uh, largest Indian overseas pro power pro project outside. Uh, it should be expedited. I think it's uh, not been moving as fast as it should. I think these are some of the issues and I think frequent interactions and, as I said, promotion of Bangladesh for Indian tourists is also equally important. Uh, when all these things come up, I think uh, people will start seeing the advantage of good relations with India. And as Ambassador Veena Sikri said, I fully agree with her that China and Pakistan cannot provide to Bangladesh what India can give it. And I think that realization needs to dawn on a common man and that will have its own political implications. All right. And Professor Pan, close the show for us with a quick concluding remark. Well, I think we need to uh, we need to continue the momentum. We need to complete the projects that are in the pipeline, and also to continue to underscore the difference between Indian involvement in Bangladesh and you know so-called Chinese involvement. Because China will never be able to do what India can provide the kind of people-to-people -people engagement and the kind of uh, capacity-building approach that India has. Uh, China's unilateral top-down model does not really work. It has not worked in other countries. It will not work for Bangladesh, despite some of the numbers uh, that we are that we are often talk that are often talked about. And I think that important point by, by, you know, by pursuing projects that benefit ordinary Bangladeshis, that, that or benefit uh, Bangladesh's developmental prospects will go a long way in, sort, in, you know, in, in removing even some of the smaller militants that are there in the relationship at the moment. Okay, all right. Then on that note, I'll call it a wrap on this edition of The Big Picture. Thank you to all my guests for joining me on the program and putting things into perspective for us. What's coming out of this discussion is that the Indo-Bangladesh bilateral relationship is in a good place and has scaled new heights. The transshipment partnership is a positive development in the right direction and it is something that can show us the way for many more projects in the months and years to come. There are irritants as far as the Indo-Bangladesh uh, ties are concerned, but we work them out and we work them out positively and the ties have only a good place and a great future is what the panelists are suggesting. With that, it's a wrap. See you again next time.